So I'm going to show you delegate chaining. This technique really isn't useful until you get into events and events listeners, which is in a future set of videos. Um, but it's easy to describe the, or best to describe the uh, behavior here. And uh, now that you've seen a little bit of delegate, so let's let's bring up let's make another delegate or the same delegate we've done before. Me delegate, and uh, let's make some methods here. Static void foo. And uh, don't blink. I'm going to type real fast. I told you that would be lightning fast. If only I could code that fast in real life. Anyway, so let's do me delegate. D gets foo like we've seen in the previous video. I can invoke D here, and I can say D gets goo, uh, and invoke D again, and so on and so forth. Nothing real new here. Okay, here's the new part: is we we can chain chain these things together, basically make chains of delegates. So what's what I'm gonna do here instead? I'm gonna say D gets foo, but then down here I'm gonna say, hey, let's uh let's add on goo, and uh, let's add on sue, and while we're at it, let's add on foo again. Okay. So now what D is, it's a reference, uh, basically abstracting away a bunch of details here. D references a chain of delegates, one referencing foo, one goo, one su, and another foo. So let's invoke this. Notice it went down the chain. It said foo, goo, su, foo there, as hopefully you expected. So a delegate doesn't necessarily have to reference just one method. It, I can reference a whole chain of methods, okay? And not only can I add to this chain, I can certainly remove from it. Notice what happens when I remove from it. I'm going to take out foo. Well, notice our chain has two foos. And I'm going to take out a foo. Well, which foo is going to be removed, or are they both going to be removed? Uh, you'd be wise to pause the video here and um, see if you can make a hypothesis before I run it. Pause. Okay, let's run it. And here we go. We see the foo goes so the very last foo was removed. So, anyway, that's that's kind of chaining in a nutshell. This is a uh, again, it's more sugar. You know, plus equals is actually short for d plus goo. And what the compiler does here is it it doesn't actually put a plus symbol here. It just recognizes this as a delegate combined. So instead, what it does is it references a static method in the base class delegate type called combine here. And notice combine takes a params delegate array, so an array of delegates to combine. Uh, so we're going to pass D as the first delegate and goo as the second. But we should, yeah, we still got the red squiggly because uh, it doesn't know what to do with this goo here. The compile time type is delegate. And delegate is the base class of all delegate types. It goes, I go, let me just do it here in comments. It goes delegate and then multicast uh, delegate and then... In this case, we made a me delegate, so it'd be me delegate. All right. So this this delegate class, since since the compile time type is delegate, it's like, well, what do you want me to take goo to? I I don't know what to take goo to. So we actually have to uh, give the compiler a little bit of a hint here, or be explicit ourselves, and say, hey, it's really a me delegate. So we're taking a me delegate and combining it with another me me delegate. But then we have another problem here: delegate dot combine. Look at the return type on combine. Um, we can't mouse over it, over to it. But on the far left, upper left corner of the screen, it says delegate. It's, it's again, it's a base type, and we know that we're combining two me delegates. So I have to do a cast here to put it down to what I really know what it is, is a me delegate. So there you go. Whew. It's a good thing we can just say plus equals because unwinding all the sugar is a little bit painful. But basically, this is the same thing as this, except this is doing a sue, whereas this is doing a goo. So we run it. And we get the same result. Okay. Um, these delegate chains are immutable. They're a lot like strings. You can create new ones all you want, but you can't cannot mutate existing ones. For example, let me let's be better drawn than uh, than just talked about. So here I have the code in in Paint. Oops. And uh, I'm going to show you line by line kind of what's going on. First of all, me delegate D gets foo. Okay. So D is a four byte reference. This is the four bytes that represents D, and D is going to point to, remember this foo, this turns into a new here, the compiler converts it to a new, uh, since it's a me delegate, it says me delegate. This is probably why I type more than I write, because my handwriting on these Wacom tablets is kind of painful, but anyway, uh, 
D references this this uh, me delegate. This is a me delegate reference. And foo, this code here is actually out here in code land. Uh, it's the program image, but basically here's the code. And so this delegate, when we say invoke, it has a that native int pointer we saw in the previous video that says, hey, go here and start executing. Okay, so me delegate D gets foo. Now, internally, it's kind of interesting how these chains work internally. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you the old implementation. There's actually a newer implementation, but outside to us, the there's no difference. I mean, it w all works the same. Okay, so when I say combine here, I'm saying com take D and then take a new me delegate go. Okay, so here's yet another instance of me delegate, and it's gonna point to go. All right, there's the. A code for goo so it's referencing goo and then and then the old implementation is basically we it would make a copy of d remember d is or what d is referencing here this object here me delegate and that references goo oh oops that references not goo it references foo and then we're also chaining it with this other me delegate so then it keeps a linked list essentially of of it, the next guy in line, all right. So the first guy in line is this, this foo. He references foo. Then the next guy in line, guy in line is this me delegate that references goo. Okay. So and then D. We'll notice here we assign to D right here. All right. So D is going to point to this chain instead. All right. D no longer points to this one. All right. So notice we didn't modify the original list here. This list is immutable, even though it's a list of one. All right. Now we have this list of two. Well, what happens when we add on? Oops, Sue. Okay. Well, so this turns into another combined thing. And so, just real quickly, let's put Sue's code out here. Sue. All right. So, so we have D, which is made up of these two, plus Sue. So. Now this equals here again. The compiler is going to new a me delegate for Sue. So here's another me delegate, and it's going to reference Sue. And then old implementation again. You can go look up the details. The new one doesn't matter. I mean the semantics is still the same. But copy these two, all right? MD. This is a copy of this guy, and so he's going to reference. Oopsie. He's going to reference Foo as well. And this one is a copy of this delegate, me delegate. So it references goo. And then again, here's our our invocation chain. All right, and then the whole thing gets assigned back to D here. So D instead of pointing to this old chain now, it's going. You know, it's not pointing to this chain anymore. D is going to point to the new chain. So we didn't mutate the pre-existing chains, either one of them, but we did make a new chain. And strings work the same way when you uh, add and remove from strings. It just creates new copies of strings and things like that. If you're really curious and you want to actually see this, uh, if you want to see this actually in action a little bit more than just invoking the chain, we can say uh, d dot, there's a method here, get invocation list, which returns again the base type delegate array, but basically it's returning the invocation list or everything in the list. Okay, so get invocation list. I'm going to say for each. And we know it's a chain of me delegates, so I'm just going to me delegate. Me delegate in. And again, remember from the for each video that this this does a cast. All right, get invocation list is returning the abstract delegate array here, but, but I'm downcasting it to a me delegate. Anyway, uh, let's console write line m dot. Uh, object which, or is it target? Target, which should be null because because all these these methods are static. All right, but then we're going to say d dot method, which is the method info, and should print the method name. So let me get rid of the invoke here. Run this. Of course, there's build errors. Where did I forget a parenthesis? Oh, I forgot a plus. Okay, and of course here I said d dot method instead of m. M's my iteration variable. Oh. What was me? Lots of, lots of poor variable names going on. Anyway, we're going to go through the invocation list and look at each one. Look at the target and the method. Run it. And we see we have foo, goo, su, because that was what was in our invocation list. Again, if I add this on, then we see that, oh, there's, there's two foos now. Instead of taking away a foo, we added yet another foo, so on and so forth. Anyway, that's chaining. Again, this is used mostly for events. 
um, the observer pattern, if you're familiar with that, then basically we can add in as many observers as we want. If you're not familiar with it, well, just wait till the events video, and we'll talk about it there.